Welcome back, everyone, and I'm here again with SBR contributor Jordan Sharp, and today we're going to be talking about how those odds have been acting up for the game between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Houston Texans. How are you doing today, Jordan? Doing good, Dex. Thanks. All righty, brother. Now, it looks like the Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be out of a job yet again with the way that well, Mallet actually led the team in the victory over America's new team, as you call them, the Browns. Anyways, for this game, bookmakers opened the line favoring the Texans by a, by a single point, and since then, the line at PinnacleSports.com can now be found at minus two, still in favor of the home team. And I really don't blame them. I mean, the way that the Bengals have been playing as of late, you know, it really leaves a lot of questions. But the main factors here are that since he is 6-3-1 and one straight up and 5-4-1 and one against the spread, while Houston is only 5-5 five and five straight up and uh, slightly better against the spread record at 6-4. and four. <laughs> But with that against the spread record in mind, I want to point out that Houston has gone 4-0 against the spread when favored with a, a half a point to a six and a half point spread. And the problem is here, since he is 2-1 when they're coming in as a pick em to six and a half point dogs. So, you know, without a doubt, this is definitely looking like a tough game to cap and especially to decide where the closing line is going to be before kickoff. I mean, what do you think, Jordan? I mean, do you think that it could actually go past the po uh, two points or might we even see it drop back to minus one? Yeah, it's, this is one of the more interesting spreads of the week. Um, it, it, I think we're going to see it somewhere around one and a half before uh, before kickoff on Sunday. Uh, the Bengals have been, you know, at times played like a good team this year, but their defense has just been atrocious recently. And and the Texans off, or excuse me, defense is not that much better. But now with uh, Mallet running the show on offense, it gives them a little bit more upside. I mean, am I crazy to believe that? Over 43 and a half would be a really, really good play here between this game and not even like uh, like we've been doing with a few other games here, worrying about this spread that's, you know, really close and could go either way. Not at all. I mean, what, look at what the, the Texans did last week. I mean, they put up, what, 27 points against the Browns? Yeah, and with Mallet now, you can tell the offense just looks that much better. I mean, he... It, it, Andre Johnson basically it looked like he lost five years, um, you know, at, at, with Mallet at, yeah. at under center. Even though uh, Arian Foster probably not, not going to play again this week, uh, doesn't I don't think he practiced all week, so that's never a good sign. But either way, I mean, you know, when you got out, you, know, you got you got Blue there. Uh, he's been playing well, so you know, I, this could be a really high scoring game. I don't understand why this total is so low. This is actually one of the lines that really struck me early on in the week. And I've been following it kind of throughout the week. And, you know, it, at, still at 43 and a half, the total hasn't moved. And I'm I, and just I'm baffled by this, Dax. I think I, I'm I'm I don't even care about the spread, honestly, in this game. Because the total <laughs> just looks so good to me right now. It's just just sitting there begging me to bet the over right now. I think I think it's definitely one of the, uh, the for the one o'clock games, at least one of the better plays, I think. Yeah, and especially considering the fact that we even got J.J. Watt making touchdowns now. I mean, that to me is a little bit more baffling than that fucking uh, overline. I mean, I, I really haven't seen anybody like him be so prolific in this type of game. I mean, you can you obviously know he's a great defensive end, but looking at him right now, you know, putting up touchdowns and stuff like that is just out of this world, man. I mean, the guy is too big. He looks like a refrigerator when he's catching the balls, and he still can come down with them. I mean, look at that catch that he did last week against the Browns. I mean, it was it was almost ridiculous the way that he actually caught it. Now, it, it, it gives me a little bit of wiggle room here when I'm actually thinking about Houston, but you're right. I mean, it's better to actually look the other way and, and think about a total. I mean, I'm, I'm totally down with you in that total. I mean, with the way that Andy Dalton could actually play and if we could see a little bit more of the same um, from, from, from Mallet, I mean, then we might have a big throwdown, you know, a couple of slings here and there, and we might see, you know, 21 points each side up before the first, you know, before the halftime kicks off. I, I'm, I'm totally agreeing with you at this point, man. Let me let me just say this too because you brought up an excellent point that needs to be talked about. Can we get uh, can we start to get some MVP consideration for JJ Watt? I mean, what na name a quarterback that's more important to their team right now outside of maybe Peyton Manning uh, and Aaron Rodgers than JJ Watt is to his team? Apparently, on both sides of the ball. I mean, uh, we haven't seen it since 1986, yep. and then the history of the award it's only been done two times by a defensive player. But man, in any other year, this has got to be it. That he, he has at least got to get some consideration and some top five votes, if not some top three votes. He ain't going to win it. 
I don't think I'm that naive, but man, I would really want to see that. And I think he absolutely is deserving if he did win the award. I mean, this guy is just nuts. Yeah. He is just absolutely nuts. I have never seen anything like him, and it is uh, it is it is so fun to watch. When I, I was watching Red Zone, when they got into that, uh, <laughs> when they got into the Red Zone, they threw that high point fade yeah. to him when, after he spread out wide. I was like, he's gonna catch that. No, absolutely, he's gonna catch that. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was just beautiful. It was just a beautiful sight. I absolutely love watching JJ Watt play football on both sides of the ball. Definitely earning every fucking penny that he got paid with that hundred million, man. Hey, I mean, more power to him, though, because, uh, you know, he keeps doing stuff like this. It's going to give him a chance to uh, continue to get paid. So, uh, I mean, hey, that's the, that's the goal, I guess, and ultimately, yeah. football. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah. But any, anyways, back to this game. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, I think the spread, just lay off of it. Total looks like a much better play, I think, here for this game. Yep, I agree, man. All righty, Jordan. As always, it's a pleasure talking football with you, and I look forward to doing this again next week, man. All right, Dax, thanks. No problem. And for SBR Picks, this is Dax Floyd. The SBR Network offers free sports picks and game breakdowns. Big money free betting contests year round, a real time Vegas style odds monitoring service and much more. So come see for yourself. To stay updated on SBR news and promotions, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Google Plus. And do be sure to subscribe to the Sportsbook Review YouTube channel to catch all our daily sports shows.